Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we are live, gentlemen. We are live. Awesome. The first episode. Oh, goodness. Well, hello and welcome to the first Line I Disc Golf podcast episode. Woo! This is uh, something new we're trying out. This one will be focused on college disc golf, going over some rankings, some past turn or most recent tournaments. And just kind of, you know, shooting the gun about... Uh, just talking disc golf, yeah, man. Yeah, especially... Uh, I think there's not really something like this out there yet, so we can instigate that and make college disc golf even more fun than it already is. That would be amazing. Yeah, if you're familiar with the channel, we've got a lot of familiar faces here, or at least familiar voices. Yes. Um, <laughs> my, I'm Daniel. You know you know me from the commentary. Um, you, what, what do we got here? I'm Dalton Hastings. Uh, next to me is... Uh, Caleb Martin. I edit some, and then I also record some. Perfect. And then our advisor of the club hey. and editor. Hey, welcome, everybody. I'm Nick Puttycomb, advisor and, uh, yeah, video man and engineer and uh, some opinions here today. Kind of does everything. <laughs> kind of just Makes does A little bit of everything. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, where do you guys want to start off? You want to go recent events, ratings, You know, I mean, you, you put this all together, man. I Let's, did. Uh, I like, tell, I me, tell me where to go. I really wanted to start with the rankings because I feel like Anyone who follows college disc golf will have a hot take on the ranking. That's, that's a good way to put that. <laughs> um, so we put together some stuff just looking at the top teams and top players. Let's start with teams because I feel like that's what most yeah, people are here for. Yeah, let's check it out. So the, the Instagram of the college disc golf posts the top 20. On the website, you can see, I think, very far into the hundreds. So we were just kind of looking at uh, each team and just looking at average ratings and Hot, or this is kind of a, a known fact, but average ratings does not uh, equal to what you're ranked in college disc golf. No, it's it's not even close. I don't th I don't think the ratings actually factor into your ranking whatsoever, which is where a lot of teams kind of get. I kind of like that. I like that. A lot. You like that? It's, I do. So it's more how you perform as a team rather than just like a number. Yeah, and I think even for singles, when it's like your rating doesn't impact what you're ra ranked in college disc golf, it makes sense because oh, if you go kill an MPO tournament, shoot 1040, but you shoot 925 in a college event, you're not going to be ranked. Yeah. And that's why I think the, the biggest takeaway from this is that going into nationals, it doesn't matter what you're ranked on college disc golf at <laughs> all. <laughs> no. So it's really tough to see. But, I mean, our top three, we have North Carolina State – or North Carolina Charlotte, sorry, Emporia State, North Carolina State, Oklahoma Christians number four, and Texas A&M is number five. Jeez. I mean, what, what jumps out to me is how many events these guys are playing. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. coming from us, I mean, how many college events do we play this year? Four or three? Nah, dog. Like, three. I, like technically two. Technically two because our conference event was one of them, and that didn't count towards rankings. But um, I don't know where they're finding 11 weekends. Yeah. <laughs> like, so <laughs> what I was looking at that I was very interesting is that the divisions that they're in and the Carolinas division had a lot of events mm -hmm. and a lot of events that were very close because Carolinas are kind of close to Virginia as well. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot in Lynchburg, which is a very common uh, place to play. That's actually where I believe um, Liberty's from, mm -hmm. um, who's another top ranked team. They're number 10. They're right behind us, actually. So where, where are we? We're uh, not on this list, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> We're number nine, but on the website, we aren't there, unfortunately. Hey, we got um, ranked, though. We did get ranked. It took a while. It did. It took a while. Uh, We're there on the Instagram, at least. I so. don't know. There was uh, We were just some issue with us being in the database or something. Uh, whatever. We're on the Instagram. I think that's all that matters. We're happy. We're happy. Um, so we were looking at average ratings. Yeah, let's take a look at this. I mean, cause UNC Charlotte has been number one for a little bit now on that have. list. I mean, I remember Cincinnati really clogging up that number one spot for a while. And mm -hmm. they kind of fell off a little bit, but their average rating is still well into the 970s. So mm -hmm. uh, UNC Charlotte, you want to take a look at these ratings, Caleb? Like, what do you what do you think and what stands out to you? Uh, I, I I was surprised to not see Cincinnati on this top 10 list. They usually are. They're number 16, I believe. Yeah, mm -hmm. which is kind of low for them. They've been higher for a while. But I, I mean, I know personally that like the ratings don't matter at all. Like mm -hmm. it, it, you can see guys that are high rated and then you'll check and then they're like, Oh, they've played three tournaments and they're all college. And then exactly. some college tournaments, so, you know, are softer. In my opinion, I think college tournaments rate very well <laughs> and sitting right to me. I don't think you agree with that take. Dude. I like, dude, maybe I just don't do well at these <laughs> like this. Like I, I look, let's just, let's just lay this on the floor. You're sitting in the room with the top 15 college disc golfer from last year. Um, cause I shot really good at one event. One round, <laughs> that's all that, that's all that mattered. But I've, I've usually felt, and this is what Jonathan, the wise wisdom of Jonathan Klein told me is that these events rank worse or rate worse singles wise, just because college guys, they're not playing all these C tiers, they're not playing all these B tiers. So their rating is possibly not as accurate. Usually they're better than the ratings, which kind of makes, um, in my opinion, the ratings for college events tank a little bit. Yeah, I can see that. That definitely comes into play. In my opinion, the, the way I was thinking about it was the field is so large 
that you're going to get such a diverse group of skill, which in theory shouldn't affect it. But I feel like when you play like a challenging course, like we just played at Towering Oaks in Jonesboro. Oh, gosh. Uh, go watch that coverage, actually. You'll see just how horrifyingly hard that course is. Yeah. Um, that it rated well for me. Um, but well, okay, let's 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 talk about what he means <laughs> wait, wait, wait. by it Sorry. rated well. Let me, let me get my point across real quick. <laughs> well, we'll come back to that. But well. <laughs> because I'm a stud, I shot 938. Like, I don't. Or the, the gaps well. are so tight that if you are if you're like a 930 player, I feel like this course is just plays that much harder. You know, when you go play a course that the rough is not as punishing as this course was. I mean, there were two holes that averaged almost two full strokes yeah. above par. No, yeah, that shouldn't be happening. I, I think it's it's. You know, it's the course is a bit of an equalizer because it's like I, uh, I think people in our club that maybe don't throw as far like stand kind of more of a chance on this course as opposed to like I know you were talking about like kind of wanting to play this course just yeah because right of, and that's typically the case you know yeah those of us that don't have the power arm like the you know you got to learn the tight gaps we saw that with even in Matt and our coverage in the last yeah. one you know or, or you're talking about Trevor and some of his mm -hmm. like playing in Northwoods and up in, in the Wisconsin and things so. Yeah, I mean, I think it's, it's a nice balance. If anything, I thought it was a perfect complement to the champion course because yeah. you've got a bomber course and you've got one that's all landing zones and strategy, and then you've got another one that's, you know, yeah, scrambling and, and finding your gaps all the time. I mean, being a camera guy, like, what were you thinking watching? Were you, like, were you envious of us playing, or were you more like, oh, I'm kind of glad I'm filming this one? <laughs> how, how good's your thumber? <laughs> <laughs> right, right. That's a great I had to throw a single thumber down. You still know, right. the rollers, all that. Yeah, no, I mean, it was definitely a, one that I, I wanted to play. I mean, I, if anything, you know, uh, you know, having played for a long time but not having the power arm kind of a person and, and having, you know, played you know, typically more in the wooded, you know, more classic courses from, you know, that were made in the 80s and 90s, um, you're like, that's just the, the style of play I have, you know. Mm -hmm. So, like, when it comes to these big, you know, ones, like, I even find my own rating, like when I go play, you know, events where, you know, I'll be pushing 900, but we're in a wooded one. And it's because everybody else struggled a little yeah. bit more. And I found those lines. Whereas as soon as that same exact group goes out to an open course, yeah. like they're beating me by 50 points easy, you know? And yeah. I'm like, so well, that's, again, it's, it's that difference of just like, you know, yeah, if you don't have the power, you know, a wooded course is your friend because you know, everybody else has got the same trouble, but if you do have the power, then obviously those big open ones are a lot better for you. Yeah, yeah that makes sense. I mean, and it was kind of cool because the course designer of Towering Oaks was our TD for the, yeah, or on-site TD, I should say. And, you know, we were just, I remember talking to him a little bit about the gaps and just, man, like he was like, I might take out one or two more trees. And I was like, Whoa! <laughs> I was thinking maybe like in the hundreds. <laughs> <laughs> no, he 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 stands by what he, he really made, does, yeah. and I respect that. I, do I, too. I like those gaps. I do. I think some of them. <laughs> you just you really have to step up. This is some words of wisdom, in my opinion. I mean, I've heard this from you and no, Jonathan. Hear it. It's like if there's a tight gap, you just have to have all the confidence in the world. You do yeah. man. You I really do. You really do. Yeah. I mean, in a champagne area, there aren't a lot of wooded <laughs> courses. <laughs> you kind of just play open courses with like 20 mile an hour winds, like we played today. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it was a different take for sure, but we saw some huge numbers on that course. Yeah. Some, I mean, how Should I pull that one up? Yeah. Let's, I mean, let's pull up the single scores for it. If we're, we're going to just kind of start talking about this event. I mean, there were what, how many scores under par? Uh, are we including evens? No. Okay. Well, there was one. <laughs> <laughs> and who so was that one? So, yeah. Who was that one? <laughs> Unfortunately, that was me. So when he, when he says, I think I'm going to score right I, it's I, like, yeah, dog. Look if you at watch this. the coverage, <laughs> listen, I think the card I was on was very good. We had some great players, and yeah. we made it look a little easier than it was playing for the field. However, I, like, there were still a lot of putts left out there, and I think if you know pros come into this course, they will tear it apart if they can stay clean. I mean, Grant, you're just trying to avoid the big numbers. I mean, looking at this spread of scores, you have three evens, one under par, and then it just starts. There's only one, one plus one, yeah, plus and then one. everything else just... I mean, 19th place is plus five. Right, and really tight. Yeah, and 14th place is plus four. So it's like there is so many people. And the craziest thing for me about this is the uh, the order of ratings. So like going into the, this event, who you'd think would win versus who you think would get last, just throw it out the window. Yeah, I was going to say. I mean, because if you're, you're right now it's sorted by, you know, scores, but it <laughs> the ratings don't really no. ma match up with that. I mean, you no. see someone 893, maybe he's a lot better than his rating. I mean, clearly yeah. he is if he shot plus three, mm -hmm. but it's like those types of guys can do that, whereas like mm -hmm. a I mean, guy like maybe Trevor, who yeah. is really good and is really good at gaps and is 970 rated, shoots over par. The crazy thing for me was we played with Texas AM second round and they averaged the best on the singles course. Mm -hmm. So they they had shot a plus two who's on my card, Noah Johnson, and then two plus threes and a plus four to average for plus three. They played crazy. They played crazy well. That's but guess what? The best 
shooting guy from their school was on their B team. 927 what? rated Wait, guy. Are this you guy. serious? Yeah, look at this. 927 rated shot Ethan. He was in the B pool. What? So he finished when we were still playing rotating dubs. <laughs> and I remember talking to Noah, who was on my card, and he's like, yeah, one of our guys, one of our guys on B team shot Ethan. And he was one under going to the last hole. I, I remember him bogey. He was telling me. And I was like, oh, no. It's going to be a bad day for me. <laughs> like, <I was laughs> Dude, like, that's crazy. I didn't even that register nuts? that he was on their B team. Yeah. I mean, and the other evens come from Matthew Karst. I hope I'm saying that right. 988 rate. Like, that's something you expect, kind of. Yeah. Like, that's a good round. And then Colton Patterson, who's 942 rated, which is like, I mean, that's like 50. his round rated 1,004. Yeah, that's like 60 points above his Super rating. Yeah, so, it's, yeah. I mean... This was just something crazy. But you see a lot of, like, D2 – or, sorry, uh, B teams here yeah. shooting really well up towards oh, the top. Yeah, there's Oklahoma Christian exactly. D2. Exactly, who's also another ranked school that yeah, we were playing Yeah, but, I mean, their D2 player is 957. Like, that's – That's that's gross. That's, that's an 18 player. They are right also a, a great team. Uh, going back to the average ratings, yeah, let's they're number out. four with an average rating of uh, 967, 968. Um, just a lot of solid players with a 995 Henry Bent, Henry Vente. Let's talk about that combo real quick because if you go go up to UNC Charlotte, you can mm -hmm. see their ratings 977, 988, 976, 972 closer together, closer together, consistent. Mm -hmm. Whereas Oklahoma Christian kind of has like you know some guys clumped a little mm -hmm. bit around lower and then kind of the the you know the yeah. hero. Um, yeah. And that that is absolutely a model that we are kind of taking over, you know. <laughs> Not really. I think we're a little bit closer than that. Yeah, but we I'd say. I mean, I, I, generally I, consistent, right? Like Yeah. But what I'm saying is like we have someone that is clearly that's able true. to yeah, like that's very true. like access those shots where it's like mm -hmm. maybe 970 four 970 players can't, you know, access yeah. a certain shot that just one 995 player can. That's a great take, yeah. Exactly. yeah. I mean, granted, again, take these with a grain of salt. These are not the most accurate. I also, uh, caveat here, I don't know if these are the four players on the A-team. I took the f the most recent A-team from PGA pages that they okay. played tournaments in. Gotcha. And I took their, their current ratings. So mm -hmm. these will change at the next ratings update. Um, the other thing I wanted to note is that, like, pretty much everyone, every top 10 team has a guy. Has that guy above yeah. like 985, 9, 990-ish? Well, I, I, you're rated. approaching the 990, I feel like that's kind of the guy. Yeah, you know? and like the crazy thing is, it's like, well, I don't, I personally, I assume that if you're that high, you can throw farther and access some harder mm -hmm. shots. But I, we don't know that. Like some of these no. 990 guys could be like shorter throwers. And again, like no two college teams have really played the same courses. Like East Coast has not played West Coast. So comparing yeah. them is very difficult. And, and oddly enough, last year on our A team, our hero was actually our lowest rated guy. Like, well, it was Ryan. Oh, um, Forrester, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but, like, he's I mean, he's a loose cannon, right? Yeah. So it's like, Literally. when we need the hero <laughs> shot, like, flip a coin, we'll see. No. Um, yeah, but, exactly. you know, he because I'm seeing, like, I saw, like, a 913 on one of these pages, and it just that was the That was that. the biggest standout to me um, when I was putting this together. Where is that? Was guy? that? Is this one? Because they have a 993. Actually, Discmania sponsored. I was looking into that. That was pretty cool. Oh, wow. That's sick. Uh, 966, 950, and a 913, which really drags that average out or down to 955.5, which is the second lowest in the top 10. Yeah. But if you were to see, like, put this guy at 950, oh, it oh. jumps up to 965. Oh, nice. It's a calculator. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> but like, I thought he was just changing it. <laughs> I mean, granted, average rating, to, it, take it with a grain of salt again, but you can see, like, just having four guys above 950 really like looks better for your team ratings wise. I think that's I think so. a take, but we played with Texas A&M and they were all very good. Yes. Well, and even across the spread as you're, as you're looking through, I'm scrolling a little further down here. They have a C team person that's in that plus five for the towering. That's Oaks, crazy. You know, yeah. so like to have their B person yeah. up there, at like top three, you know, yeah. and their C yeah. person still a lot rating of, in the top five scores. Yeah. A lot of A teams barely had guys shoot plus yeah. five. It was, it was right. tough. And I think that's the difference between having like, a talented squad of four and like building a program of like just multiple, you know, really solid teams. Shout out to ISU. They do that. Fantastic. I mean, they do. They their really B do. team is all well in the nine hundreds, like, you know, well in the mid nine hundreds. They have a very deep roster. Yeah. And, and it's like once, you know, I think Colin is ineligible next year or something, you know, I'm, I think he's, I think he's done. I think he's a grad he, student yeah. fifth year. They're going to have a, a replacement really just to keep that team at the same level. Yeah, and you know what? So I was talking to Noah uh, on Texas A&M, and they have like a 988 rated freshman coming in from his hometown. Oh, Jesus. Which is like, I mean, this we got to win it this year, it sounds like. <laughs> <laughs> so, sounds no, like next year we're not that so version of the freshman. I, yeah, we really do. Oh, goodness. And it's that easy. <laughs> yeah. So the other event I wanted to look at with you guys was, this is an event that, I mean, we kind of don't have any idea about because it's, it's the um, 
the Liberty Flamethrower Collegiate Championships, which I at. think is hosted by Liberty University. Yeah, it's in okay. Virginia. I'm yeah. Oh, yeah, those, so they were, they're, Liberty's in Lynchburg, Virginia, which is actually where Foundation is. So oh, very cool. kind of cool. I know they they run, I mean, oh, it was hosted, the tournament director's Hunter Thomas. That's kind of cool. Oh, oh yeah, the, yeah, yeah. the guy, so, he was at cool. Nationals last year. Oh, really? Yeah, I, w- I made it on their little thing. It was like a spin the wheel, throw the shot. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, <laughs> congrats, was, congrats. This is my biggest accomplishment. So Lib- <laughs> it's kind of funny. Liberty took this home, uh, and they won by three strokes over Virginia Tech, and then there's – so they shot minus 21. Virginia Tech was minus 18, and then there's a, a fall off to minus 12 and minus 11. Oh, that for does the Ohio State. not make sense, though. It because doesn't. Because Ohio State – Looks so good. Like, they should be right yeah. up there with them. And then Liberty's D2 team, or B team, uh, tied seventh, but was only 11 strokes off them and beat a lot of people's A teams. Jesus. I, they, 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 they have a really stacked team. They have a they have a 1,000 rated guy on the nose that really helps, Clayton Lewis. And then the rest of their team is all above 950, 958 and above. So that really helps. That's crazy. And then Clayton also won the singles. Ohio is, State uh, looks better, though. <laughs> like am I out they here, like, do, I'm crazy. but like, they lost by nine strokes. I'm, cr- I mean, I must be crazy, but like those ratings just kind of look. I mean, I, th- I think that average is better. Oh, it 100 does. 994, 962, 980, 960. Actually, I don't know because that thousand really. Should we do the math? <laughs> <laughs> you guys chit chat. I'll figure this out. Do you, do you know anything about the courses they played on these? Because another case, you got that giant gap there. You know, where we're looking at a lot of teams that struggled because of a uh, tight woods or, or again, I, what the camp course was. I don't just because um, it's in Forest, Virginia, not Lynchburg. So I'm uh, leaning to say that it wasn't. Um, the course they're playing for Worlds. Oh, right. actually, it is. It is the course they're playing for Worlds. They probably played that doubles. New oh, London. New London. Yeah. Okay. Oh, wow. The, the, the single scores are all messed up. You have to click on them. And okay. It did, oh, okay. They definitely played an easier version, I think, because this guy, there were a lot of eagles Shredded. out here. Yeah, he did shred. 1028 is awesome. Bars, probably? I mean, I'm not saying that they aren't, but there's a lot of people who had a lot of birdies who also shot very poorly. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, this is a really cool event. It was really fun looking at setting this up, but yeah. Well, it's interesting. I'm going to call back to you were kind of hitting on a little bit there. It's like that difference of like a program from a team that just, yeah. hit, you know, for, for a year or whatever. And, yeah. and like, that's something that I've been kind of see is like the trend here, you know, is that mm-hmm. we're seeing, we're cresting the, okay, there's just enough teams to play. Now we're getting like, well, there's competitive teams that are playing. Now it's just competitive programs that are playing. And it so, is. Um, so yeah, it's just really interesting to see that, you know, as I think about how are we going to develop us as a program, you know, is yeah. that just be a single star kind of a thing. And that's, again, you're, you're making that comparison earlier of like the difference between a solid team that has, you know, four people that average out to 950 versus two of them are 910 and one of them's a thousand you know? right so, yeah yeah um so yeah it's really interesting that you can even think about or that strategy that goes into that you know starting to think about the program and even comparing it to other like pro sports and things too like oh yeah. you want to have your star like there's nothing wrong with having your you your, your big star. name yeah. out there right that's usually what pushes you over that's who wins the series you, you just know? can't only have but him. you can't only yeah. exactly and i think this is you know i've been thinking a lot about how like building these programs those comparables of like you got to have your rookie rookies yeah. just like you got to have your veterans on mm-hmm. there you know and so um so yeah just interesting to think about like some of these programs that we're seeing are they going to start to sustain or are we going to see some drop offs and moving around a little bit more as we see the difference between again a hot team and a hot program yeah, yeah that makes a lot of sense yeah i mean eligibility in college disc golf lasts it's forever forever <laughs> like <laughs> it feels like forever so I, I wouldn't be surprised to have them kind of keep with this eligibility and it's like yeah maybe these pro you know these programs can get built there's more players mm-hmm. i also i wouldn't be shocked it would be a huge move if they limited it to undergrad um I think that's smart. And then kind of, you know, see what happens there because it's like the original reason they had it open to grad students is because it's like, this is a small thing. Like, you're you're struggling to get four on a team. Right. But I don't know. Now that there's programs and, like, people can spend, like, a a lot of time and spend full teams, like, why have 26 and 27-year-olds playing? (laughs) Exactly. Yeah. I mean, we're guilty. Is that college (laughs) We're guilty. (laughs) Well, yeah. we got yeah, Matt's Matt's twenty six. But you know. he's allowed to do it for this year. And then <laughs> yeah, next he's year. allowed. This to This is do his it. last year, and the rest of us are all undergrads. Um, also, I did the math. Ohio State's six points higher than Liberty. What was oh, their average? Oh. Nine uh, seventy seven, I believe. Jesus, Liberty. Um, they're nine seventy. Oh, it's like five points more if you round. But I mean, I think that I mean that goes to show you Liberty's in the top ten. Ohio State's not, and um their rating is a little bit better. Like, yeah, no, yeah. Ratings I mean, don't really mean anything. Right. It's all about performance. Right. And especially yeah. since those ratings, again, those are single ones. It could be your home course. It could be like so many things in your advantage yeah. versus again, these, I mean, yeah. 
other than getting a practice round in, I imagine a vast majority of these are blind, right? I'm like, you're not oh, getting yeah. out there. And, you're getting, and if you get a practice round, it's it's a quick one the night before, and you're not really getting a lot of time to learn the routes or take On a second like shot at it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're probably fresh Ugh. out of the car and yeah. tired. Six Sore. hours to Jonesboro, Arkansas. I did want to shout out, actually, Liberty's uh, – Disc golf page on their club sports website is like fantastic. Let's see it. Uh, they have like a really cool, they have like a shop set up. They have news articles that are written about them. I think by their, um, by like guys in the club who yeah. are like wanting to get into journalism. That's also a huge thing. College disc golf is really cool. Cause like, we're not just disc golfers. We have interest outside of that. We are, so we, we are, our, our graphics guy, uh, he definitely, st- like, he does photography. Oh, yeah. Um, RJ's a wizard. He is a wizard. That's why our graphics are so good. Shout out RJ Burke. Um, really, really pulling it together on that one. And Nick, yeah. like, I mean, this is another point of having a great college advisor is, like, yeah, he, we're, the place we're in right now, it looks so professional because he is. What is your title here? <laughs> I can tell you all about I it. I think he's actually. just the president of this building. That's what, <laughs> I, I that's just what I interviewed him on his his job and everything. And I the title is like five words, and it's like associate and director or something. There's a lot awesome. of stuff in there. It's it's a senior associate director oh, of operations wow. and experience. <laughs> so, I know I, I earned that senior through years of, of work here. But you did. Uh, but you're right. Yeah. Like. But you know, on that same point, like the the uh, the media opportunities are, you know, like, uh, you know, it's huge, right? It's completely open. I mean, we're one of the only channels actually doing this right now. And I Mm -hmm. think that that's where, you know, like when it comes to college disc golf, there's going to be like a skyrocket moment, you know, because, Mm -hmm. you know, if it catches on a little bit or if every team just did their own, you know, little quick recaps and photo or whatever, even now, like we're trying to find news for this podcast and it's hard to find, you know, and that's where it's still a low hanging fruit of like, even like you're saying here, like the club sports at Liberty, like just write an article. Like it only has to be like two or three paragraphs about your event you just did and get it out there. And it's more than exists right now. Yeah. yeah, and I like the th- coolest thing is is they literally have a countdown till their next event, which is nationals. It's and actually it's, so cool. It's like it's counting down right now. It's thirteen days, thirteen hours, six minutes, and it's 24. thirteen days away. Isn't that crazy? Oh my gosh, <laughs> it's under two <laughs> weeks we, now, guys. We gotta go putt. Yeah, we gotta get well, out of here, man. To be fair, uh, is it really? Thir- oh my goodness, this is crazy. <laughs> 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 like, Everybody's having a real we really. This, oh my this gosh, this is why I have so much anxiety about what practicing. are we doing? Uh, apparently, nothing compared to them. Uh, get on the course. They have really cool articles. I think you guys should go check out their stuff. Uh, just check out college stuff in general. We have a website too. Yeah. It'll look like this one day. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, talk about building a program, right? Like, yeah, this is. I think so. I think there's a huge difference between building a program, competitive teams, yeah. mm-hmm. and building the program to play. Right. Um, because cool. like we do, our club runs a lot of stuff casually. We do leagues. We, we do, do putting league in the winter. Um, but to be honest with you, the hardest thing is is like once we have tryouts and make cuts, the interest drops off significantly. Yeah. Because if you're not on the team, I feel like a lot of people don't want to commit to it as much as, you know, just having fun out there. So, right. right. Well, that's that trick to the program, right? I mean, we at this point, you know, we 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 have a C team, but it's not like a C team that's, you know, robust like we're seeing with right. Liberty and even like ISU it, like, alternates and some all of these the others. Time, yeah. yeah. Right, right. So, I mean, I think it's it's a, it's a slow build, but I think that is like that's the next challenge, right? Is the challenge is. of, you know, how do you have your minor league system and your majors at the same time, you know? And mm-hmm. it's like and that's where you know, like yeah, whether it's like, keeping people engaged or or finding that right recruiting system, or, you know, is going to be interesting. And that's where even thinking about, you know, the next year or so or what are we doing like, you know, do we need to start thinking about student coach roles or start right. thinking about I think like do. those things that you know elevate more than just the classic oh we go to quad day and we recruit a bunch of people and we have a bunch of general events and things like that it's like again you have to start thinking of like like a pro sports team does right like yeah. they're yeah. recruiting the minute they know what students are coming here like not even wait until they're here on the day of like do we need to start going out there and scouring the like you know the admitted people and seeing who's got a thousand rating you know like we yeah need to right these <laughs> folks, you know and you know or, so it's yeah it's, it's really interesting getting to think about that again those systems that you know not just having things fall in your lap or not or yeah. getting out of the startup mode right yeah. i mean because for so long even college disc golf itself is only 10 years old so it's like yeah. that's still a startup as far as like sports are concerned you know well, and rotating doubles is three years old like this yeah. is right. this is new stuff that is i mean i when i transferred this is my first year here and i remember reaching out to the club and i just like got the sense of them being surprised that i reached out which is kind of funny <laughs> <laughs> bro we were like you have no idea Charlie i was 979 i was not there dude he sent the chat into the group and he was like guys 
it happened. <laughs> and we're like, no way. That's so we're funny. Like, we're like, let's check it. Let's check his Instagram. 970. We're national champions. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Maybe Let him start calling the, the recruiter, the admissions office. But like, can we get a scholarship for this yeah, guy? Yeah, you know, yeah, can we get this locked not. in here? <laughs> I did want to ask you, Dan, about this. This is something I want. I didn't write down, but I was really thinking about. Like, what have you seen more engagement in the club in recent years, especially this year, since our team is so much more successful, you know, being ranked ninth in the nation? Yeah, I mean, are you like personally more like, you know, like a line I just numbers. Golf rather than. I want to know numbers because, like, our league. No, numbers are good. Like, right, that's good. That's good. I mean, it's, 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 it's not linear, you know? It's, it's really. It's not. not linear, man. Like, I. It, it depends on the strength of, of your exec board, people's people's commitments. Um, it, you know, and a lot of times depends on just people having cars. I think my freshman year, it, it was like it, the whole club was on the shoulders of Jonathan and Ben. Jonathan Klein, Ben Wyckoff. Like, they Shut up, ben. only guys that, like, had cars. And it's like, if you wanted to play disc golf, you had to text Jonathan first <laughs> because it was right after the COVID boom. So everyone that was in the club, we were, like, 75% freshmen. Um, I was a freshman at the time, so it was it was much more centralized. And then when we all kind of you know became sophomores and had you know cars, it felt like the club had grown, but maybe we felt a little bit more disconnected. We were all going out for our own rounds rather than um, you know having you know our all carpooling. Right. And this year, I think it's it's really its biggest year yet. I'd say, That's I'd great. say, yeah. That's cool. I remember being on quad day my first time and just kind of like seeing all these people playing. It was really fun. To yeah. Watch. We were all out there. I wasn't, but we were all out there. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, the, the thing that got me into college disc golf was I emailed, uh, the president, Connor Kelly. And he was like, yeah, like, you know, college disc golf's a real thing. And then I Googled it and immediately went to the <laughs> website and the website pulled me straight up to like the video coverages of nationals. And Did I was, you see, I saw us. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, well, that was the that was like the third or fourth video I watched. I watched the most, uh, the more recent one. Um, good round, by the way, guys. <laughs> but it was like it's just so fun to watch. It's so different than watching, you know, pros absolutely tear apart courses. It was like, oh, rotating dubs. I was like, I. It took me a second to figure out what was going on, um, and it was it was such a cool environment because I didn't know single scores played a, a role into it. And mm -hmm. I'm really excited that we're going to be able to cover nationals this year. We're stoked. We should definitely shout that out. Um, I don't know. Caleb and Nick both driving. Was it twelve hours? <laughs> we're all you're. You're the only one here flying. So we're <laughs> I'm all seeing family. Driving. I'm like, seeing family. That's 10, my excuse. Ten plus hours. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Ten, um, ten plus to uh, to just film. Yeah, we'll get. We'll definitely get, let you guys throw. Some I mean, it's I cool to see people have that role in the club. <laughs> like I, I could not have imagined when I got here as a freshman that we would have someone you know, on the team just dedicated to, you know, filming the team and, and helping the team. And we've even talked about just how good of a caddy you are, too. Yeah, yeah. you're a like, caddy. We, I mean, look at my Brave the Midwest rounds. My one round say, he was caddying was way better. Yeah. yeah, it was crazy. And the one that I sucked was you were not there, but then the <laughs> one that I was in the 990s, you were just like, I was like, the buzz, you're like, yeah, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> and he's like, to something hear, to bounce okay? off and of. That's right? what exactly. I, <laughs> I remember, man. Like, A teams in the, in the past, like at University of Illinois, it's like we've had sometimes, ah, it's Ryan. I'll say it. It's fine. <laughs> I love you, Ryan. But like, sometimes he'll just feel so confident that like this is not the right shot. And he's like, even after you commit to the shot, he's like, you can do it. I don't support it. <laughs> it's it's like, bro, awesome. I, if it's dumb, you got to just like, even give me the confidence because yep. if I don't yeah, have the right. confidence back him up back up your there's team there's no way it gets there it's yeah. not yeah. getting near the basket yeah. Trevor is probably the only one where I'm like you're not throwing that disc I will take a <laughs> no, disc out so of true. Hands. <laughs> <laughs> the, the funniest thing I think was we were playing at Jonesboro this weekend and he was like I didn't have the disc for that shot and then like the, later that day he's like <laughs> oh my god I forgot I had the trace in the bag <laughs> like it was in his bag on the course and he's like I forgot I had it I'm like what that's that so Trevor carried all that way so for Trevor. nothing but, I mean, this is definitely, wrapping this up, this is definitely what we want the club direction going because yeah. it's really hard to control how good we are uh, and who we get. We're definitely doing a lot of practices, a lot of training. Um, that's definitely what we should be doing to try to compete yeah. for nationals. Next year is going to look a lot different with teams. Every year is different. Um, but this is kind of what we wanted to do between coverages. Uh, we will be doing just covering MPO tournaments. Yeah. Uh, so after nationals is when Champions Cup is on which is the first uh, major of the year for the PDGA. Right over there in Peoria. Yeah, which is actually really not cool. Bad. I might go watch a round or two. Uh, you're not playing? No, unfortunately, <laughs> I don't not think yet. I'm eligible Maybe for next that. year? Maybe next year. Maybe when I'm better. Uh, but uh, this is definitely what we want to do. We want to hear your feedback about it. Yes. Um, 
we this is so much fun doing. I mean, we yeah. accidentally went way over time because we were having so much Did fun. We? <laughs> hey, as far as I'm concerned, we're the first ones to kind of do a specific yeah. college content. And we're not like here this. to compete. We're here to just grow college disc golf as a sport because, it, I mean, I'm a sophomore. I know you're a junior. If yeah. this can continue uh, past our years here, that would be really awesome to see. Um, Building the program, man. So, you know, like, subscribe, uh, share, please. Uh, let us know if, if there's like a segment you want us to try. We definitely, there are other disc golf podcasts out there we don't want to copy, yeah. but we definitely want to make this as entertaining as possible. So, any final thoughts by you guys before we dish out some thank yous? Yeah, give us some feedback. All right. Like, what was cool? What was, what was boring? What, what did you skip? You what know, did you want to click off? Yeah, <laughs> tell us tell us that. Probably me interrupting. <laughs> no, you thoughts. silly goose. We love we love listening to you talk. No, I mean, I, any any closing remarks from Nick and Caleb? I was gonna say, you know, I think this is a great idea. Like I said, any any uh, news, any media at this point is is really important. It's getting yeah. the sport, you know, a documented and out there for people to learn about. Like you said, you looked up college disc golf, and all you found was a couple of videos from one event a year ago. Yeah. It's like <laughs> just this year alone, we're gonna you know multiply that by sixteen times. You know, so getting more of that content out there. So yeah, we definitely want to hear like, what do you want to hear on these things? You know, what kind of information can we share with you? You know, what do you want to know about tour life, or, or I guess in this case, college tour life. College you know? life. You know, yeah. like we're still doing the vans, we're still dumping. You know. Yeah, getting out there. I do just pop in my head. We're gonna vlog Natty's. Oh, that'd be so. Fun. <laughs> We're vlogging Natty's. Okay, cool. awesome. But uh, any thoughts, Caleb? Yeah, if you guys have any like cool stories from your own club, like college clubs yeah. that are out there, like I don't know if other clubs will watch this. We'll find. We out. hope. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we, yeah. We want, you to watch this. yeah. we want you to enjoy this. But if you have any other cool stories, that'd be cool to share, and we'll talk about them. And. You know. And we're so sorry if we didn't talk about your club. It's We only looked at rankings, average ratings. Um, it's really hard. I mean, there are hundreds of teams. There are. It was really difficult to, like, even put together a lot of the stuff for this. So, um, But huge thank you, Nick, for letting us use this space again. This is the same space we do the coverages in. It is. So go watch our coverages uh, with Dan leading Please. the way on the mic there. <laughs> and uh, Caleb for editing everything. I mean... It looks no. so hard. Uh, Nick Caleb and Nick and Toby. It. Toby, yeah. yeah it's but, a team um, effort here. You know? yeah, it really definitely. is. Yeah. So I think we got to tell him to like and comment again. I we, think it's like, kind of a time. Midwestern like goodbye Caleb's, here. Uh, we'll put a bell <laughs> somewhere above one of those two or even above Nick. Uh, so, yeah, <laughs> you know, your support is greatly appreciated. Uh, one last uh, shout out. Tri- <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I'm so no, sorry. You gotta say this. This, you gotta is, say this is a plug. Uh, Trifox Disc Golf. They're one of my sponsors. Huge shout out to them. They will. We will put a link to their store in the description. Uh, if you use code Dalton H10, you'll get 10% off your order. They are great people. The Schick family, incredibly nice people. They run the Fox courses up in Wisconsin, which is just over the border of Illinois in like Antioch area. Uh, fantastic people and love what they do. So yeah, go use that code and get pick up some new plastic. Pick up some new plastic. Always well, need new plastic. Always. <laughs> so thank you guys so much for watching our first episode and we hope to see you again.